Welcome to the Transform Your Life podcast. I'm your host, Cass Henry. I'm on a mission to help women live their best and happiest life. In order to do that, I believe we need to live with a lot less clutter in our homes and in our minds. So if this is you and you're looking to learn the best tips for transforming all areas of your life, then you have come to the right place. Thanks so much for being here. Now, let's get started. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to the Transform Your Life podcast. Thank you so much for listening to another episode. This week, I wanted to chat with you about the all or nothing mindset or mentality, as well as the highs and lows, the roller coaster of the highs and lows that a lot of us have hopped onto unwillingly. (laughs) It's like, imagine your friend is like, hey, you want to go for a walk? And then they throw you on a roller coaster and you can't get off. Um, it, It kind of feels like that no one really wants to be in that high or low all or nothing mindset but sometimes we just find ourselves there and I definitely am one of those people I feel like many people who have ADHD anxiety depression have this kind of mindset and character traits and I am learning me personally which is why I wanted to do this episode I'm learning how to adopt a medium kind of mindset a good enough mindset without settling and without um like not like I still want to challenge myself in all ways that I can but not to try to strive for perfectionism or again like the all or nothing kind of thing so the way that this all or nothing or highs and lows can show up for you well let's just start with the all or nothing so maybe you love really really hard when you find someone that you like um And you just throw yourself fully into that relationship and you like love the person right away and you want to give them your all of your time and your attention and you kind of begin to abandon other things, your relationships around you. But then on the contrary, when you're not with someone, you are like so single, you fear getting into relationships, you you fear falling in love again, you have a hard time trusting people like it's it's seriously all or nothing. Um And I've definitely been like that in my life. I went through, I I feel like I love people just in general. I love really hard, but then I also have a hard time trusting new people um, because even though my intuition is really good at guiding me and you might be the same, sometimes people are really sneaky and they they really just slip through the cracks of my uh, intuitive radar. And so I do try and be mindful of that without thinking, you know, all people are good or all people are bad. Again, that's black and white thinking, all or not thinking. Um, not, not all or, yeah, all or nothing, not all or not. <laughs> so all or nothing um, can show up in love and relationships, things like that. Like you might go through a couple months of being with people like every day and wanting to go out and be at events and parties and clubs and bars and go traveling and just submerse yourself in, you know, events where people are. And then you might just completely burn out and then want to be by yourself for the next, you know, six months, whatever it may be. So finding a healthy medium is really, really important so you're not burning yourself out and you don't feel like you're crazy. <laughs> because I know sometimes I, I've asked my therapist, I'm like, do I, do I have bipolar? Like, am I crazy? I feel like with all these highs and lows, I feel like there was something totally wrong with me until I realized that's just a bit of my personality or like fully my personality. I'm trying to change that. And you can change your personality for sure. You just have to become aware of it and be willing to, you know, choose different, like choose consciously different decisions moving forward. So I am single. And as I navigate the whole dating world, I want to make sure that I'm not diving headfirst into relationship again while abandoning you know because right now I have I have developed really strong amazing friendships and relationships with people around me and that brings me so much joy and in the past I've completely thrown myself into relationship and saw the person like every single day and I would get scared that if I didn't see them every single day then they would cheat on me or leave me (laughs) Obviously, these are not good habits to have. Um, Those kind of come in the realm of 
people pleasing and and teetering on codependency. I, I I'm definitely like a recovering codependent. Um, and then attachment styles, but all of that is like a whole other podcast episode. Maybe I'll just find someone to interview on that because that's not like totally my specialty, but it does come in the realm of all of this. So when you find yourself throwing yourself into love and relationship, just know that you can relax, you can calm down. You like that person, if if they're meant for you, then they'll stick around even if you don't see them or talk to them 24-7 or see them every single day. It is okay. And as I'm telling you that, I'm also telling myself that. So another way that the all or nothing mindset can show up is with food. Um, for me, I will binge eat like junk food and then when I'm like, okay, I have to really stop that, I'll completely cut out junk food altogether. And then I'll only eat healthy stuff. And then as soon as I slip up, I'm like, okay, well, I'm back on unhealthy stuff, I might as well just only eat unhealthy. So um, if that is you, you are not alone. Um, But I think it's a lot about just giving yourself the chance to balance it out. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm trying to choose, you know, really healthy dinners every single night. I mean, hot dogs and eating out are not healthy, but I do have that from time to time. I'm human, um, not that that's an excuse or anything, but it doesn't mean that, again, all or nothing for dinner too, you have to always be healthy for every single meal that you have or every single dinner. So I will have, let's say the other day I had a scone and then I ate an apple. So that's some pretty good balance. Maybe in the past I would eat the scone and then I'd feel really bad for eating the scone and then I'd just eat more junk food. But I'm like, no, we're adopting this medium. Not all or nothing, not perfectionism. We're going for a medium. Good enough. Uh, balance. Whatever whatever word you want, adopt. Medium doesn't sound good, but I can see the visual on like, I don't know, a scale and it just seems balanced. So that's what I'm going for. So if you have an all or nothing mindset or mentality around food, I really do suggest that you give yourself grace and compassion because I find that especially when it comes to food, um, all of these kind of things come down to like a sense of worthiness, feeling good enough, um, anxiety, shame, maybe even trauma from your past, definitely um, striving for perfectionism. I think it's really important to practice mindfulness to cultivate self-compassion and instead of you know if if you're eating just super healthy and almost in like a punishing way then that has something to do with like your body and the way that you see yourself and and what you deem as worthy when it comes to your body and being loved um and belonging a sense of belonging according to what you look like it really hurts my heart when I find that people are kind of self-punishing um, when it comes to their body and their health. I've done that a lot in the past, for sure. Uh, and I still struggle with that from time to time. Absolutely. I'm learning. That's something that I've really been learning how to have a have like a balance in. Um, I definitely have cellulite and my knees are chubby and my feet are not the prettiest to look at because they're also kind of chubby. Um, and my hands definitely don't have a size, um, whatever, four or six ring size. They're much bigger. But all that to say, I'm learning how to love every part of my body, whether I eat the scone or eat the salad. And I'm not causing myself to have to completely stop eating junk food altogether I want to do it in a way of self-love like performing self-love by eating healthy not in a self-punishing way eating you know healthy so it can it can be on a spectrum let's say you're eating salad to to give yourself nutrients and self-love because you really want to treat your body well versus you're eating the salad because you feel shame of eating you know junk food the night before and that's in a punishing way and shame is the lowest vibrational um, like feelings and energy that you can have. And it really just does not attract anything good into your life. And so next time you choose to eat something healthy, really ask yourself, why am I doing this? Who am I doing this for? What am I hoping to get from it? What is the purpose of this? And do I want to do this? Do I like doing this? Like you can completely stop (laughs) stop in your tracks when you're eating something the next time and really ask yourself, why am I eating this? What drove me to eat this item and this piece of food? And how do I feel about it? How will I feel after? Because that will will give you a lot of insight um, 
about yourself. Something that is something that I have inside my Worthing Free group coaching program is we had someone on there, a guest expert, who helped us really navigate food and our relationship with food. And she gave us a really amazing tapping exercise, EFT tapping, uh, which is really amazing if you have like food cravings or you're feeling guilt or shame around food or whatever it may be, maybe around your body. So if ever in the future you do choose to join Worthy and Free, you will get that guest expert training. It's phenomenal. So another way that the all or nothing mindset can show up is around money. Maybe you are a total spender and you just love blowing all of your money. That was me in the past. In fact, I would tell the person at the cash register, please do not tell me the total. Like, I don't, I don't think shit, I don't think you can scream shame any louder than telling someone not to tell you the total of how much you're spending. That was a total problem for me in the past. Now I'm very aware. I don't shop very often, but it's not in a, in an all or nothing way. I buy things that I need. And when I do need things, I tend to check Facebook marketplace first, or I try and get it used first because why not? I like to save money in that way. I'd rather spend money. I'd, I'd rather my money go further than spending it, let's say, on a pair of Lululemon pants that are $110 at Lululemon, whereas I can go to Plato's Closet, which is a consignment store, and I can get them for $40 instead, and they're just as good. So that is where you achieve balance. Just if you're still wanting to buy something, you give yourself permission to get it for cheaper. Um, some people might spend all of their money. They might always be online shopping and things like that. Or some people might not want to spend any money at all and they just save everything and they penny pinch and they get really anxious about money in general. So again, the all or nothing mindset, really just checking in and giving yourself permission to spend things, to enjoy your money and without having the fear of going broke or repeating past generational trauma, um, generational, maybe it's trauma or patterns. I guess that's what it is. Generational patterns of maybe being broke or going bankrupt or things like that. Meanwhile, you're sitting here like super comfortable, but you're still terrified to spend money. So checking in, seeing if you're adopting that all or nothing mindset. Another way that this can show up up is maybe like going on vacations or trips or things like that. Maybe you're in a season of like wanting to vacate every day or every weekend or every single month. Um, but then you'll, but then after that, you will, you'll take like 10 years off from vacating because you feel bad that you, you know, you spent all that time or money or you take so many vacation days, whatever it may be. So just giving yourself permission to live your life while also having a balance of also working or taking care of business, whatever that looks like for you. What I've come to realize by having so many clients when I help them declutter and organize their homes as well as in my Worthy and Free group, po cro oh my gosh, group coaching program. Talk about a tongue twister. I'm not editing that out. That's just more extra work for me. So sorry if, um, <laughs> sorry if sometimes I trip up on my words. I record this for free. I upload it all. You know, none of this, none of this makes me money. It actually costs me money. So I don't go through the hassle of editing it. So I'm sorry if sometimes I trip up on my words or I say um too many times. Don't don't stop listening to the podcast just because that maybe if you are annoyed with that, then I suggest that you go and record your own podcast and see if you can get through an episode of just I, like I'm just riffing. I'm not following any script. See if you can get through it without saying um or tripping up on your words one or two times. <laughs> Maybe in the future, my friends, I'll have someone who will edit my podcast and all of that. But for now, I'm a solopreneur. I do it all. I'm a single full-time mom. And here's my ADHD going on a rant. I was not even talking about this. So this is like just full-blown ADHD. That, that's what happened to my brain. Anyways, back on track. Try and find some balance in living your life and not wait until you retire or till you die to actually live. It's really sad. And that actually happens to so many people. So just, you know, find that balance work, work as much as you need to, and then go on a trip. Even if it's like camping once a month, or I don't know, I love camping. I'm like obsessed. I'm really jealous. If, if my neighbor's listening to this right now, she's going on her like third week in a row this weekend. And I'm just like, can you please take me with you? I really want to go. But my son is starting basketball tryouts. And so that's going to tie up our weekends. Although I couldn't imagine being a hockey mom. My sister's a hockey mom and so are some of my friends and their weekends and evenings are just completely tied up for months and months and months. That's not something that has ever interested me. I really just like having my weekends 
to be free not in an ice rink. Anyways, all that to say, I want to go camping again. <laughs> Two other things, I guess, that I was thinking about in terms of the all or nothing mindset. I already talked about work. Well, I kind of talked about working out. When you work out, make sure that, it's, again, it's not self-punishing. It's like you're challenging yourself or you want to work out to be fit and healthy and take care of your body and give yourself self-love and be strong or sexy or whatever it may be. But if you find yourself going to the gym and punishing yourself because you ate out the night before, that is not what you should be doing. That is the all or nothing trying to reach perfectionism. That's sitting in, in deep shame, um, not feeling good enough. If you don't work out, if you don't achieve a certain size, if you don't burn a certain number of calories a day, if you don't, you know, stay on the scale and it's the same number or less every single week, like that is all self-punishing and that's the all or nothing mindset. And I would really love for you to next time. When you show up to the gym, ask yourself, why am I here? Who am I doing this for? What am I trying to achieve? What is the purpose of this? And make sure that it is in alignment with your values and your goals, okay? The last one here, this is something that I've really struggled with in my past. And um, someone recently asked if I would talk about this on the podcast because I haven't before. And it's the all or nothing when it comes to alcohol. I don't really know if I'm supposed to say anything when it comes to this kind of stuff on podcasts. Essentially, if you do struggle with alcohol or eating or, you know, anorexia or alcoholism or drug addiction or anything like that, depression, whatever it may be, make sure you get the help that you need. Like this is, I'm not a therapist or anything like that. So just make sure that you take whatever I say as a grain of salt, please, and get the help that you need if you do need help. Um, I'm always here to chat with you. I can't give you like any advice in terms of that, but I can share with you my personal experience and that's what I'm doing today. So I used to be a binge drinking, kind of like borderline alcoholic, if you will. When I would drink, it would be the whole bottle or nothing. Again, the full all or nothing thing. The moment I would start drinking alcohol, I would drink the whole bottle. I would black out every single time. I would wake up in random places in the city, places that I didn't even know. One night I even woke up on the street and a friend of mine helped me, um, helped me to go home. <laughs> it was just not a good time. And this happened since that happened from grade nine until after high school. And that was probably every single weekend. I was just, you know, binge drinking and blacking out and it ruined my friendships. It ruined my, my, any self-respect that I had. I ha I carried around so much shame around that. I, I never felt good enough. I always had anxiety and depression and being drunk amongst people who I thought were like better than me allowed me to not experience those feelings on top of, you know, I just wanted to let loose and have fun like, like everyone else. But it got to a point where it was like starting to get dangerous because I didn't know if it would be happy cast when I was drinking or it would be depressed cast if, it, if I was drinking. And so my depression had gotten so bad that I wanted to end my life when I was drinking. And again, if you suffer from this, please, please, please get the help that you need. Um, this is not a joke. This is your life. I love you. I don't want anything bad to happen to you. And I didn't want anything bad to happen to me either. I would like... I would jump in front of buses and hope that they would hit me when I was drinking or I would just I would just do reckless things because I didn't care about my life back then. Um, and looking back, I have a lot of compassion for that girl, for the um, for the girl that was in so much pain back then. I have so much love and compassion for her hurt heart at that time, because for someone to really drink that much and not care about themselves that much it just it's just really really sad to think about and so it's taken me a little while the I'm I'm almost 30 I'm 32 next month um but looking back on that younger girl I just want to hug her and tell her you guys got me crying here <laughs> I just want to tell her that she's loved and she's good enough and she's worthy and she's wanted that's all she is, she belongs just as much as everyone else. And the things that happened to her in her past don't define her. And she doesn't need to numb out or drink alcohol in order to be her silly, goofy self. I was bullied a lot in school, elementary school and high school. And I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I was supposed to be, to be loved, to be accepted, to fit in. And so when I wasn't accepted as I was, because I'm I'm goofy, I'm hyper, I'm silly, 
And that's not for everyone. But back then it was really hard to handle the people that didn't like you because you had to be around people every single day in high school. You had to show up in elementary school. You were always forced to be around people and you knew whether they liked you or not. You knew whether you were accepted or not. And so alcohol really helped me with that. It was a crutch, but it was, it was, it was so damaging that I, I no longer drink alcohol. I will never get drunk again. I will never, um, at first I, I gave myself like a no shots rule because the moment I would start having shots, um, that was just game over. And I knew that. So before I quit drinking, like pretty much fully, I would, I would say, okay, I'll drink, but I'm not having shots. I would start creating boundaries for myself. But then I realized that those boundaries weren't working for me. I just need to stop altogether or else, you know, maybe I wouldn't be here anymore. So I have like one or two, maybe Bellinis a year. Um, like those peach Bellinis, they're like slushies. If they start making, um, if they start making virgin ones of that, I'll definitely have those over the others because uh, it's very low like alcohol content. And what I'm, I'm not endorsing or saying that if you suffer from alcoholism to still allow yourself to have one or two here and there. Again, get help if you need it. This is just what I know for myself to be safe and to be totally okay. It's been, it's been fine for me up until now. Some years I won't even have any. It really just depends on how I feel. It, it, I just do it because it tastes good. But anyways, back to that. All or nothing can show up in so many different ways. So just allowing yourself to really check in it be, become self-aware know that you don't need to strive for perfectionism because perfectionism doesn't make you any more worthy or loved or worthy or anything like that if anything it it's it's such a detriment to your life and to the the people even around you that are watching you because they may even try and strive for perfectionism by watching you do what you do thinking that in order to be happy or successful or loved or whatever, that they have to strive for perfectionism. And that's not the truth. That's not the case. And so really just offer yourself so much love and compassion and check in as much as you can and know that you are worthy. You're wanted. You're meant to be here. You know, the, it's such a small percentage. It, it is such a small small chance of every single one of us being chosen to be put here on this earth and to be who you are uniquely as you are. And I think that is such a beautiful reminder, <laughs> truly. Um, so yeah, if this is you, um, I'm just sending you so much love and compassion because I know that when we are suffering from all or nothing, it could be just our personality, like if you have ADHD, but I think that it goes much deeper than that. I truly do. I think it's masked as being as being like a character trait of ADHD or of other things. But I think that if I were to sit down with you and have a conversation with you, I think that, you know, it might turn emotional and you may not totally like that part of you. I think that we all want to achieve a sense of balance because it can feel so constricting when we're trying to achieve that all or nothing perfectionism. The roller coaster is exhausting. I totally get that. And so let's just all start striving for medium. You know, if you can, if you can see a scale and you know that medium is right there in, in the smack dab in the middle, then I think that that's a really, really great place to be. The highs and lows are definitely in the same realm or all or nothing. It's just that maybe sometimes we're really hyper and happy and like really filled with joy and passion and excitement and drive and motivation. And then maybe something switches and you go into total anxiety and depression and seclusion and isolation. And that's definitely been me in the past as well. And it is so hard to experience those highs and lows, those up and ups and downs, and to just go through the roller coaster of emotions just in and of itself, it's freaking exhausting. And so, as someone who has suffered with severe depression and anxiety in the past, I have come a long, long, long way in terms of turning myself around when those depressive states do come. And something that I can tell you that helps every single time is to getting out of my comfort zone and getting out of a routine and going outside or going on a little road trip or driving or 
meeting up with a friend that I really love or going to get some food, whatever it may be, just getting out of getting out of it's almost like let's say you are wearing clothes and those clothes smell really bad. Well, the only way to stop smelling really bad is to take off those clothes and put on a new pair of clothes. It's the only way. Have a shower, put on a new pair of clothes, and then wash those old clothes. You have to do something different in order to get a different result. And the same thing comes with everything in life, but especially our mental health and our mindset and our emotions. We we need to do something different. So if you're doing the same thing every single day, day in, day out, and you're not deviating from that, of course, you're going to start to feel bored and lonely and restless and isolated and all of those things. You need to change it up. You need to get out. You need to take a different route, go on a different walk, you know, breathe in different air from a different part of the city, go hug a tree. I don't know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. There's so many different fun ideas. You know, the fall is here officially as much as I don't want to say that, but after the fall comes winter and what you could do to get out of those, you know, those states a lot is cold therapy. Go, you know, safely, maybe with another group of people where they can guide you to doing polar dips, cold polar dips. That will shock your system for sure. And then have a routine of really just jumping out of your mindset regulating your emotions things like that and again I've suffered so long in the past and so if ever you want to chat again I'm not a therapist or anything like that but I've definitely been there and sometimes having had gone having talking to someone who has gone through what you're going through can really help um that's that's what my worthy and free group coaching program is all about breaking free from everything that's holding you back from living your happiest and healthiest and best life and feeling worthy of receiving that. And so I really just share everything from the past and everything I've learned over the thousands of hours of podcasts and books that I've read and all of that. So my friends, if this is you and you have suffered from all or nothing or the highs and the lows of emotions, things like that, I really I really am offering you to give yourself some self-compassion, love, know that perfectionism isn't the key to success or love or life in general. And that medium is the new perfectionism. I swear by it. If if this is you and this episode has resonated with you, please send me a message on Instagram at underscore Cass Henry. If you know someone who could benefit from it, please send them this episode or even post it to your Instagram and tag me. I would really love that. Even though I was super vulnerable during this episode, I didn't think I would have a little cry fest. But you know, when emotions show up, you just got to let it flow or else you, um, you know, you sink it back into your body and that doesn't do good for anybody. So I unapologetically show up on this podcast every single week for you. And I just ask that you do the same when you come and chat with me. If you do like this podcast, please subscribe to it. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts, like hit the st- hit it, hit the five star button. Leave a written review. That would mean the world to me. Again, I don't get paid to do to do this, and it actually costs money to do it. <laughs> um, so it would it would really really help me out. And I do this just so I can help you feel better, feel happier. And, you know, sometimes it's even a little bit of personal therapy as well, just getting things off my chest. So anyways, I'm sending you so much love and gratitude. Thank you so much for being here for another episode of the Transform Your Life podcast. And I'll see you next week. Love you. Bye.